Hi, a bit of a different scenery today because I am on a training camp with the Polish national team. We are training for Junior World Orienteering Champs happening this year in Romania. But uh, still, a channel has to move on, has to go on, the show has to go on. So here is a video that uh, is going to go live on the channel tomorrow. So if you're watching it, probably it's been recorded very, very recently. And today I want to talk to you about taking risks when it comes to orienteering. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Tom, I am an orienteering coach. And if you want to learn more about this fantastic sport when you run with the map and compass, just go and explore the videos on the channel. There are already a bunch of them and lots of interesting stuff is already there. And now back to the risks. Let's talk first about what risk in orienteering is. How would I define it? So uh, we've actually been talking about taking risks on one of our uh, discussion panels uh, during the afternoon or evening sessions. And um, I think that the risk when it comes to orienteering is, could, could be defined that whenever you feel any kind of unease, uncertainty, you're losing uh, your belief that you know exactly where you are and what's going on around you, this is slowly progressing into the risk area. So it's hard to really define a very, um, you know, well-defined cutoff where you're saying, okay, this is risky and this is not risky. It's obviously a little bit, a little bit of a gray area somewhere between white and black. But still, I think all of us really, really know when you're in full control of what's going on, and when you're not. So when you're not in full control, this is risk, right? And you can uh, take more risk and you can, or you can take less risk. But in general, I think that all of us are quite aware when we are taking the risks and when we are going safe, let's say it like this, right? I've been already talking on this channel a little bit about hope. And I think that hope is kind of connected to risks because if we are hoping that something will happen during the race, that the control is going to be behind this hill, is going to be behind this bush, then I feel that we are not in full control. And because we are hoping, we are taking some risks. Because if we are in full control, we know that the control is going to be there. So I think that maybe hoping is another interesting factor that might contribute in determining whether you are taking the risk or not. Now, it's, it's worth to mention that there is a fine difference between avoiding risks versus going fast. So I, I want to be clear that I'm not trying to say that um, going without any kind of a risk means going slow. It all depends on um, how well trained you are how good you are with map and compass, how good you are with your navigation skills. And of course, for some people, they will be able to go very fast while taking almost no risks or very little risk, right? For other people, you might be able to go just a tiny bit faster than your walking pace, for example, because your map reading skills are not good enough. But I want to be clear about one thing. Avoiding risks versus going fast, um, we definitely need to explore this area a little bit. So normally you would say that risk is connected with how fast you're going. And that's generally true. And we will talk about this a little bit later in this video. But I also want to emphasize that depending on your skills, it, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you want to take less risks, you have to be going slower, okay? So for um, beginners, for intermediate runners, this will definitely be true, right? But the whole idea of orienteering, I think that it, it, it is nicely summarized by, um, if you want to be great at, at orienteering, you need to find this balance between um, going as fast as possible and taking as little, of, uh, as little risk as possible, right? And all of the years and effort that you put into the training are actually focused on pushing this line higher and higher and higher and higher higher, so that you can go faster and faster with taking less and re less risk or at least staying at the same risk level. 
Okay, so that means that it requires a combination of tens of skills, of uh, thoughts that are happening in your head, of different strategies, approaches, habits, and all that. When it, when you combine it, it will uh, give you the outcome that is essentially the balance between your speed and risk, and it will be individual for each and every one of you. And I, I guess that the whole purpose of this channel, um, well, not the whole purpose, but the, the education part of this channel is to show you the way of um, how many different areas you need to be focusing on in order to get this line or push this line as far as possible, okay? All right, so let's move on to the next point. What's my general approach to taking risks during the race? My approach is that you should try to avoid risk as much as possible, okay? And I'm talking now about your racing pace. So you're going into the forest and you're competing, okay? It's not a training session, doesn't matter if it's competition or, or training, but you're in your head, it's not a training session, it's a competition that you want to do your best on, okay? So during such a competition, you want to take uh, as little risk as possible. That's my general idea. Um, there are exceptions to this rule, and again, I will come to these ex exceptions a little bit later, because first I want to focus on like the, the main part. Now, why do I think that uh, this is the right choice? Because my experience shows that if you take more risks than you normally do, or more risks that, 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 than are necessary, then most of the time you will have the worse result than what you're hoping for, okay? So, in, in some cases it might pay out, but in most of the cases you will actually have um, significantly worse result um, compared to what you're hoping for. Another interesting question is why are we taking more risks than necessary? And I wholeheartedly recommend all of you to reach out for the book by Daniel Kahneman called Thinking Fast and Slow. Daniel is a um, Nobel Prize winner, so it seems like the guy knows what he's talking about. The book is written in a phenomenal tone. You can read it really without any knowledge regarding the subject. And while reading the book, you will slowly understand that people are more prone to taking risks and people are very, when they expect a big reward in the end, and people are also very bad at, um, scoring the risk factor. So what it means is that we usually think that the, the risk we are taking is not as big as it is in reality, okay? So if you combine those two, this is what explains very shortly why, um, why we are more prone to taking risks. And I think it translates into the orienteering race as well. Um, I, I think that there is even a, a section in the book that when I read it, it immediately clicked for me that this is exactly what's happening during the race when people are making mistakes and then they are trying to uh, go a little bit faster to catch up with the lost time, right? Or to make up for it. And it's, it's beautifully explained in the book why this kind of approach is attractive to human brain and why, of course, it's not a smart decision to do. But anyway, that's a side topic. So this is why we are prone to taking more risk. Like our brain is wired to do that. It's not exactly um, our fault and we don't make these decisions consciously because if you think about this topic a little bit more consciously during the race and not just, you know, take a decision in a matter of seconds, then you will realize that taking more risk will be probably disadvantages to you. But the problem is that during the race, when we are in a hurry, then our system one, I think this is what Daniel calls it in the book, is in charge in general. And system one will be making those kind of mistakes that I um, explained earlier. So yet another question, which is kind of very interesting, is should you risk it for the biscuit sometimes? Okay, and this question has been asked by uh, one of the runners that are here with me on the training camp. 
And I answered it according to my practice with the national team and with my sport club uh, throughout the last, I don't know, probably 15 years. So my approach to this is that it all depends on your goals, your individual goals, right? And whether you understand the decision that you're making. So I'm, I, I guess I'm kind of saying that if you want to make your own mistake, you're allowed to do that. But you need to be aware of some facts. And if you accept those, then it's fine. What I'm talking about exactly? Well, let's sum up what I said before. First of all, if you uh, are starting, let's say you're starting on um, the World Junior World National, uh, sorry, Junior World Orienting Champs. And you know that with your current level, fighting for whatever position it is that you have in mind, is not within your reach unless you take a little bit of a more risky approach during the race okay so then you're thinking okay i'm going to try to run a little bit faster compared to what i'm normally running so that i give myself a chance to reach for this higher spot in a roster or in the in the end results and as long as you understand that making this decision and behaving like this during the race, taking more risks, is more likely to result in a total failure rather than a tremendous success, then I as a coach will allow you to do that. Um, and my experience shows that I, I actually tried to you know, scan my memory today and find an example when it actually worked and I don't think that I remember even one race during a fair point during um, the national level competitions right so European champs and world champs I don't remember even one race when the runner would actually go for it risk it for the biscuit and succeed in and, and w was happy with it most of the time you will fail because your brain is not used to running with higher speeds. So it can only work in the situations when a better runner catches up to you and because of that better runner, you will have better speed. But if you try to do it yourself, the risk is simply too high and you might get lucky. I'm not saying that it never will happen. You might get lucky. It's hard for me to gauge the percentages, but in most cases, you will unfortunately fail. And instead of being, let's say, in the top 10, you will probably be in top 40. If that is okay with you, fine, take the risk. Just be aware of the consequences. And the last question that I have for today is when does it make sense to push the risk? Are there situations where you actually should be doing this? And the answer to it is yes. So the previous situation, I would say that no, this is not a good moment to push yourself and and go into more risky mode right because it's the uh, like um end goal competition and you want to achieve the the highest possible place during that competition uh, but take that, that doesn't mean taking more risk you should probably just run your normal race and whatever happens happens right but at the same time when you think about okay so how do i prepare myself to go faster in a forest. Well, one of the ways that you will eventually have to go through is to push yourself to go a bit faster than what you're used to, okay? Because if you want to learn new things, you need to explore new speeds. If you will be running with the same speed all the time, your progress at some point will plateau. So you have to push yourself to go faster. That's why training sessions when you're running together with several other people are so useful because these people are pushing you to go faster. But you can also do it just by yourself during individual races. All you have to do is before the training session, you have to think about it. And you have to say, today, I will try to push harder. And I will do my best to still perform perfectly when it comes to orienteering and handling the map. And I will see what happens, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm not advocating now that you should go um, a lot faster than your normal speed, but try to go a bit faster, right? Try to go a bit faster and see what happens. 
What will probably happen is that during some of the legs you will fail. And that's okay. That's a goal of this training. But also another goal of this training is to understand that on some legs you will actually not fail. And then you will understand that while you go faster, you maybe need to adapt, adopt a little bit of a different technique while orienteering. Maybe you need to generalize a little bit. Maybe read less details from the map. Maybe pick better orienteering points. But that's exactly the point, right? You need to push yourself to go ha faster, harder, to understand what changes have to be made in your orienteering technique in order to keep this speed, but also keep the risk level on the same level as with the previous speed. So these are the kind of sessions when you're allowed to be a little bit more risky so that you can learn from it and then lower the risk again back to the acceptable levels. I hope that it makes sense. If you think that this approach is not generally good, I'm always open-minded and I will be absolutely happy to read your thoughts on this topic. So if you have something to say, just post it in the comment down below. Also, if you think that this video was useful to you, consider giving it a like or subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. And that's all regarding the risk-taking and I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos. Cheers!